Feels like... Uh, feels like end of the world Friday, holy cow. Now, you just put the solar eclipse together with what is going on right now with Israel, Iran. It's kind of nuts. I'm sure we'll all be here on Tuesday. Uh, but folks, I, I gotta tell you, none of this would be in the news if Donald Trump was the president. None of it would. I don't know if you're paying attention to what's going on right now between Iran and Israel, but it's a big deal. Headline, CIA warns Iran will attack Israel within 48 hours as revenge for the consulate strike. U.S. intelligence officials have branded Israel's strike on Iranian consulate in Syria as reckless because they hate Israel and fear a wider war in the Middle East. They're not wrong about that part. No matter what side you're on on this, this is not good news. It's not. The CIA warning Israel that Iran will attack the country in the next 48 hours. So Israel, rightly, killed two Iranian military commanders with the strike on Tehran's consulate in Syria. You cannot have a genocidal, brutal attack like we did on women and children and leave it unanswered. When the main country behind that was not uh, Hamas, Gaza, the Gazans, it, it, it was Iran. When even the Washington Post and the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times all agree, yes, Iran financed, provided logistics, provided support, provided training for that horrific attack on those women and children, some of whom were burnt alive. Other horrific things done to them that I can't even say that are kind of barbary we haven't even seen in this world in years, particularly what was done to the women. You look that up in the pages of the New York Times. It's, uh, there are no words. That has to be responded to with total scorched earth. It cannot be tolerated. You can't say, well, we're going to let you do a little, but now you have to stop. No, it has to be absolute scorched earth. We cannot tolerate that kind of barbarity. In our world, we can't. It's got to be punished. And that is what Israel is doing. But Joe Biden has an election he needs to win. And he's got heavy, heavy Muslim populations in a couple of swing states. So he is trying to... Uh, be anti-Israel and pro-Israel at the same time, and he is in the process of starting World War III because of it. But let me tell you what, what scares me, because we've been all over this. You can Google this for yourself. Th this, this is what scares me about this. Joe Biden has let Israel off the chain. Donald Trump had Israel on its knees. Israel, I'm not sorry, sorry, Israel, Iran. Iran on its knees. Iran and the Iranian people were struggling to eat. That's how fenced in Donald Trump had them, and he was trying to push them to overthrow their leaders, and they were well on their way. The world would be so much safer today if that had happened. The sanctions Trump had on Iran were brutal. You cannot be running around arming the Houthis, helping Hamas kill innocent women and children in Israel if your people can't eat and they are on the verge of overthrowing you. You don't have money for the military hardware. Joe Biden came in, lifted the sanctions. That was worth $100 billion to Iran, and then said, wait, do you have enough to con complete the nukes? No, okay, I'm going to go ahead and unfreeze $16 billion for you. And when you make the announcement that you're doing that on 9-11, that is an absolute slap across the face of every victim uh, of jihadism, of Islamic terror on earth, most especially the American ones. And that was the intended effect. But it sends a signal to Iran, we got you. You go ahead. You get them. You do what you need to do. We love when you do this. And that is how we are here. And let me tell you what scares me about this. So we have Iran hitting that, uh, we have, I'm sorry, we have Israel hitting that consulate, that Iranian consulate. Now Iran is going to retaliate. Folks, months ago, and you can Google this, we were told that months from then, Iran would have nukes. Worst case scenario for Iran, Iran has nukes by the election. They may have them now. So when you're looking at this and you're seeing this escalation caused entirely by Joe Biden and the Democrats' policies here, I I'm convinced the Hamas attack wouldn't have taken place on October 7th uh, were Donald Trump in office. They wouldn't have been the money and they wouldn't have dared logistically. So now we have this horrible situation where a maybe nuclear-armed Iran or maybe nuclear-armed Iran by the election or maybe nuclear-armed Iran by the summer is going to hit Israel. And guess what? They're going to have to hit back. They'll have no choice. They had no choice 
but to hit them at the consulate in the first place and start taking out their leaders. Why? Why did it, why did Israel do that? Because Iran is targeting Israelis all over the world for assassination. They have no choice. They must respond. Joe Biden did all of this. All of it. 100%. And folks, I still have this right here um, on, I have a very limited amount of prep space right here. It's tiny. It's like, it's like two and a half square feet, right? So whatever I keep on here is very important to me. And one of the articles is this, 150, I'm sorry, 180 American troops injured by attacks on our bases by Iranian proxies. 130 of them have permanent catastrophic brain damage. Three are dead. Three are dead. And yet our president will not put the Trump sanctions back on Iran that Trump had on Iran simply because they were the world's foremost sponsor of terror. They have notched 180 dead or damaged American bodies. And what do we do? We continue to let them draw down on the 16 billion. We continue to leave uh, to, to leave the sanctions relief in place. And that money goes right into the military hardware that you're going to see them hit Israel with. We are the reason for this war. We are. Well, not me and you. We're good people. Uh, Joe Biden. Joe Biden and his evil regime. And now they're playing with fire because they have made sure that Iran has the money to complete the nukes. You know what else they did? This was incredible. During the first flight of, I want to remind you this, of Joe Biden to Iran. What did they announce while Joe was in the air? One of the most just toe curling things I've ever heard. Oh, we're dropping the sanctions that prevent Iran from buying the missile needed to deliver the nuke. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. You're doing what? Oh, we're, we're basically giving um, Iran permission to go ahead and buy the missile needed to deliver the nuke. Um, okay. Their military leaked plans to use those missiles to detonate over the U.S. as an EMP. We sure we want to give them to them? Oh, yeah, that'd be fine. Uh, uh, okay. So with that, all right, yeah, that's really scary. So not only did we give them the $16 billion, check to pay for the missile and the nuke. Not only did we give them $100 billion in sanctions relief so they could go ahead and hit Israel, check. We said, hey, you need a missile. Dude, you, do you need a missile for that nuke? Cool. We will not re-up the sanctions. Make sure you, Iran, get the missiles. Anything we can help you with? Because we really want World War III. I mean, folks, at this point, nobody can be this dumb. They are trying to foment World War III. We'll have more about this and what the CIA says uh, they think Iran could do as early as today in retaliation. All that coming up. Unbelievable times. We live it.
Well, the good news is they got him. They got him. The creep who did unbelievably. Um, and this is such big local news. I'm just I normally I would not cover something like this until after 730 when the kids are in school. So I'm going to give a content warning for kids. This could be kind of scary for kids if they're listening. But I do want to cover it in each hour. So normally I don't break that promise to you that the show will be content friendly for children uh, before 730. And then it's, you know, all bets off because I assume that they are in school after that. Unbelievable story of a 20-year-old Simpsonville man breaking into homes. And I, and I think what really gets you at the gut level is the pictures. He's so, I don't know what the word is. In the camera images, the video images, he was captured in breaking into homes and making a beeline right for kids' bedrooms. He's naked from the waist up. I don't know if he's naked from the waist down. You can't, I mean, you can't see. He looks like a thing right out of hell. He does. He looks stone cold evil. And you look at that as a parent, it just sends a chill down your spine and sends you, you know, right online looking for ways to secure. And you should as a parent every window in your home, every door in your home, whatever you could do. If you can't afford, you know, a buffed out security system, you should have something. There's a lot of very effective low cost things on Amazon. Because a guy like this should never get into your house and out of your house breathing in one piece and not bleeding. Unbelievable. So the story continues. Uh, he, 20 years old. If you're just hearing about this, he broke into not one, but two. I Actually, I think three. He was aiming for a third home. Uh, we've got some evidence of that this morning on the show. I'm going to talk some more about it from yesterday. We think there was actually a third home that he tried to get into. That woman had dogs. And he appears to have been repelled. So we'll get into that in a minute. But the mother um, of the 20-year-old Simpsonville man accused of breaking into homes, exposing himself to children, is speaking out. So Kenneth Wayne Battles, the third, was arrested after not one, but two break-ins this week in Greenville County. So out of his mind. He couldn't help himself. After he made headlines in the first one, uh, breaking in, sexually abusing a child in their bedroom while their parents slept. He did it again the next day. So this is a guy who can't stop. He can't stop. He needs to never see the outside of a cell again. Honestly, it's a shame that one of these parents didn't get him with a hail of bullets. It'd be better for the world if that had happened. Better for children. Because he's going to be a danger the rest of his life. So he was arrested for two break-ins this week in Greenville County. So the first one occurred on Longstaff Parkway uh, in Simpsonville shortly before 5 a.m. on April 2nd. We now have more details in that. Uh, and this is the unfriendly part for children. Uh, investigators say Battles broke into the home, entered a girl's room, covered her mouth, climbed on top of her and sexually assaulted her before escaping out a window. Dear God. The next day, Battles forced his way into a home on Crown's Nest Court around 5.25 a.m., entered another girl's room, exposed himself, and tried to solicit sexual favors. He then fled through the window again. Battle's mother, Anne, so the perp, Battle's mother, Anne, said he grew up in the foster care system. She adopted him as a teenager after he'd been moved around to multiple different homes, and she believes he needs mental health help. He had a neglectful upbringing, she said, in 2020. Uh, he had been thrown into the foster system. He was a friend of my son, and so we said we will take him. She said she hopes that now that Battle's in custody, he will get the help he needs and not just sit untreated behind bars. I just want him to get help, she said. Real serious help, not just thrown in jail or prison and let him be. This That is not going to be successful. She's telling us. Anne, who did not want to release her name again, she is his foster mother, uh, said she hopes other families involved in the incidents find peace now that he has been apprehended. I am sure you're devastating, devastated, she said, addressing the victims. I hope you have some peace that he's been arrested. And then from there, I've got to take it and hope he gets some help. So Battles has been charged with four counts of burglary, two counts of indecent exposure, kidnapping, assault, and battery. So, look, we've got a really long track record in the state of South Carolina of very liberal prosecutors because... Uh, we do not elect them, and our legislature is extremely liberal. I, I'm telling you, look, this is a state 
where the most notorious serial killer we ever produced killed at least seven people. They think probably a lot more got a, a plea deal for life. OK, so th this is South Carolina. This is not a functioning criminal justice environment for the most part. So now we have to watch this case closely and hope this guy doesn't get a light sentence because it could it could happen. He could be bonded out. It could. I'm telling you, these judges are nuts. A lot of them. And that's because they are liberals. They are liberals appointed by liberals in the legislature who masquerade as Republicans. You got, got to really got to watch that. I mean, look, we just had a situation where a guy knocks on a door in the morning, says his car is broken down, asks, asks for help, gets into the house and executes both members of the house point blank. He was an accessory. He did it. And the prosecutor. Would you think he got life? Two murders, not one, two. First degree, that is clear first degree murder. That is plotted out. That is not manslaughter. Doesn't even get life. He'll be out in his 50s when he's in his 50s. That's the South Carolina criminal justice environment. And it's excuse after excuse after excuse. But what it really is is sympathy with criminals. That's, that's what we do here. That's what a lot of our prosecutors do here. We should not be cutting plea deals with serial killers. We should not be cutting plea deals with double homicide, double where all you wanted was to rob them. That is clear premeditation. I don't care what it takes. Do the trial. We, we don't plead deal with these kind of people. We don't. We don't do that. But we do here in South Carolina. I mean, it, it's unbelievable. Anyway, um, yeah. so yesterday, um, and, and I think there's going to be more to this story about battles, uh, because yesterday one of our listeners sent me a picture of this creep at 3.47 a.m. at a third house. It was her neighbor's home. I'm not going to use anybody's name. It was the neighbor's home. She was in the kitchen at the time. She had let her dogs out to go to the bathroom in the garage due to the rain because it was raining. Can you imagine this? Police come by later, right? And they're saying, hey, the guy's been in the area. Can we, you know, can we see any ring camera video? You know, can we check your ring camera? Can we check your video? You got any video? So she, you know, she wants to help. She turns it over. The police take a look at it and they show her a picture of the guy standing on her back porch. She didn't know he was there. Yeah. Anyway, the police officer showed her a picture of the suspect, asked if she knew him. When she responded, no, uh, that's when the police showed her the picture from her camera, from her back porch. He's standing there. It's like something out of a horror film. Anyway, uh, thank you to the listener who sent that in. Um, that wow, that picture, <laughs> that is crazy. I was I was just looking at it, showed it to my family last night. I was like, whoa, whoa, and she believes uh, that the dogs might have scared him off. Just the just the noise. They don't want noise. They'll move on. So, uh, God bless. Glad he's in custody. But you know what? It's a really good learning lesson for parents and just for people. Just because you live in a nice area like Simpsonville that everyone kind of thinks of as safe does not mean you're protected from evil. There's no walls. There's no fences. There's no gates. It's all around us. And you need to stay safe. And there's a lot of affordable ways you could do that, uh, you know, with things you could put on your windows, your doors, even door hangers if you can't afford a security system. But give some thought, especially if you have kids to just maybe doing a little more security around the house. You never want a situation where a guy can get into your house, abuse your child, and leave. While you sleep, you don't want that. And it's easy to prevent that.
Wall Street Journal article getting a lot of traction. What $100 at the grocery store would have bought just five years ago before Biden inflation now cost $137 now. And the increase hasn't been uniform. Some things up 50% in just five years. Can you imagine if Joe Biden, the Democrats win, which will signal to them they can print whatever they want until the dollar collapses? And they'll keep going to the dollar collapses. Can you imagine what our food bills will be like five years after that? Because that'll signal to them there's no consequences whatsoever. They could just turn the, the printing press up and never turn it back down again. I don't know if Americans fully understand that. I don't know if the women in the suburbs who are going to go vote on abortion fully understand, okay, but your living children need food. I, I really don't. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not sure that there is a comprehension of that. But you're seeing what has been wrought over the last five years. Um, $137 today to buy what would have cost you a hundred bucks just five years ago. Unbelievable. Okay. I laughed out loud when I saw this headline. I, I mean, I just busted out laughing yesterday and it was one of those, it's, it's that peel of laughter you do when something is so absurd, it's funny. And I've been telling you for a while, including on the battleground America podcast, the Biden administration's goal is world war. Three. They want a conflict with a nuclear armed country. They want it desperately. And they've been trying for it since Barack Obama was in office and they overthrew the duly elected government of Ukraine and caused the violence and bloodshed in that region. It was a region, it was a very peaceful region until we used the neo Nazi forces there, Obama did, to overthrow the duly elected government of Ukraine in an attempt to assassinate its leader who fled to Russia. After that, the installed government controlled by our CIA and State Department, which is very well documented, by the way, New York Times and Washington Post uh, both have reported about the CIA bases uh, controlling that government, have been controlling the government since Barack Obama admitted that in the last two months. It was remarkable that that's finally been admitted. It was known, but it was never admitted by the political class until now. That government was assassinating ethnically Russian areas, doing assassinations, mass bombings, schools, hospitals, apartment buildings. Wait, what government? The Ukrainian government. It was an ethnic genocide. They pushed Russia to the limit to get the war they have now. So they worked very hard for the war they have now. Look, there's no good sides in that war. It's not Russia is not good and Ukraine is not good either. Not good people. Again, the kind of people that bomb hospitals, schools, neighborhoods indiscriminately because of the ethnic Russian blood in those areas. This is not something we need to be involved in. It was a peaceful area before Barack Obama and Joe Biden tore it apart. We need to get out. Stop it. Stop this madness. But still, with all of that, including the ethnic cleansing, that the Obama regime was doing in Ukraine, they still couldn't get Vladimir Putin to invade. They tried everything. Why? They want conflict with the nuclear armed country. They don't want the nuclear armed conflict on our soil. They would like to hold it at another address, partic you know, particularly Ukraine would be nice. I've explained this exhaustively on the Battleground America podcast. You cannot look at it any other way. So what was it that finally got Vladimir Putin to invade Ukraine? They did some fighting back against the government we installed, hurling, you know, missiles and other things, what bombs more like it uh, over the border to try to protect those ethnically Russian areas of Ukraine. But uh, they could not get Vladimir Putin to invade. What they finally did was announce that what Ukraine would join NATO. So what would that mean? We as Americans, the French, the Germans, everybody would be it would be incumbent upon us to go to war with Russia if Russia attacked Ukraine or if Russia invaded Ukraine or if Russia continued to try to protect those ethnic populations in Ukraine that the Obama administration brutalized. So that's a problem. We caused that entire problem. This is our war. This isn't even Russia's war. This is our war. They lied to Putin, said you, uh, NATO was going to take Ukraine in. They were telling Ukraine, you're not getting into NATO, but just go along with the lie. One of the most incredible interviews I've ever seen was Vladimir Zelensky admitting on CNN, yeah, they we, we lied. We all lied. I was never getting into NATO. 
we were never getting into NATO. Well, by then the tanks had rolled and Russia had invaded. They tricked Putin into invading. Finally. Is he a good guy? No. Is this a conflict the world needs? Oh, heck no. But still, they have failed to achieve World War III. Despite lying in 2022 and saying that Russia had bombed Poland. Turned out it was Ukraine that bombed Poland. But for about 48 hours, we were on the verge of uh, NATO Articles 4 and 5 being triggered because Zelensky was lying and saying those weren't his missiles and that we needed to retaliate and go to World War III. Thankfully, Poland had some honest politicians. They investigated and called the whole thing off. People have no idea how close we were to World War III with Russia over that. So now they're trying something new. They got a new idea. They got a new plan, a new way to get into World War III. Why? Why do they want to do this? They want our contractors to profit because they're big donors. And this is a upcoming election season. They also want to have absolute ability to censor and crack down, which they could if we were in a nuclear armed conflict. In other words, a conflict with a nuclear armed com- country, that doesn't mean we're exchanging nukes. That just means there's a danger of it. And so they can go online and use extreme draconian powers to crack down on speech, which is what they really want. So that's where they are. That's who they are. So they're trying to figure out how do we get into World War III with Vladimir Putin? He just won't play ball. So their latest idea, and this is what I laughed at yesterday when I saw it. I just busted out laughing. Just the absurdity of it. Antony Blinken in a, 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 a societally suicidal statement says, quote, Ukraine will be a member of NATO. And they're saying we're going to do this this summer. Wow. That is Vladimir Putin's line in the sand, and it has been for two decades. And they know that. That's why they chose it. Okay. This is an unbelievable statement because for decades and decades, the rule with NATO has been if you are in a war, you're a country, you're in a war, we don't take you into NATO. Because the second we take you into NATO, guess what? We got to fight your war. You would not do that. It makes no sense. What, whatever the country is, it doesn't matter if it's Ukraine or wh- whatever the country is, it doesn't make any sense. That is the standard that has been applied to Moldova, which is asked to join NATO and was turned down. Why? Because they're in a never-ending low-level conflict. Um, there, they're, they're in a low-level war. So they said no. Georgia wanted to join too, but they've been unofficially at war since 2008. So they were turned down. You can't take a country that's already in a war into NATO. And now U.S. troops have to go and fight by the terms of the agreement that creates NATO. Ukraine is in the same situation. So when Antony Blinken, our lunatic secretary of state says, hey, we'll take, we're going to take Ukraine into NATO. The second we do that, we got to go fight. But these people are so nuts. I would not join the military right now. If you know anyone in high school is thinking about it, explain this to them. Do not. These people are nuts. NATO does not import wars. That has been the policy of NATO since it was founded. So what Blinken is saying here is a provocation to Putin. Hey, we couldn't figure out any other way to get in this war. Let's take Ukraine in and then we can get in this war because we will be required by treaty to then go to war with Russia, which is what they want. They don't want to do it here. They don't want their nice homes in the D.C. Summers, suburbs blown up. They would like uh, to see Ukraine decimated instead. And in Washington, they tell themselves, I've seen interview after interview, Putin won't use nukes. Ah, that'll never happen. I don't know what'll happen if we back him up against a wall. Folks, this is the scariest thing I've ever seen. It's also one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. It's just so jaw-droppingly dumb. If Trump did this, the media would have turned it on him. It's that dumb. It's begging for it. It's going, you know, we've we've tried everything to get into a war. We can't figure out how to do it. Uh, A a World War III nuclear arm war, so we're going to try it another way. Folks, I I mean, we're, we're at the point now, civilization is on the line in this ballot. World peace is on the line on this ballot in the fall. This is this is just not good. I mean, this is just we cannot allow these people to win. They do not belong anywhere near power. And that's not even right wing, left wing. This is, hey, do you want a war or not? So if someone in your family is thinking about joining the military, do not. Let me tell you why. They're already running historic drills. NATO is. 
90,000 soldiers, including our troops, are drilling for war with Russia. Started in January. We have not seen anything like this in over 50 years. And NATO is already planning to dispatch a 60,000 strong force into Ukraine, led by the French. Believe me, second that election's over, they're going to want America fighting on Ukrainian soil against Russia. Just watch. And this is how Blinken's going to get into it.
Well, if you're on your way to drop your kids off from school, I know a lot of you listen then. Uh, heads up for you if you're, you know, dropping them off Greenville County Schools, Spartanburg County Schools, all districts. It's going to be e-learning on Monday. So uh, you need to make plans for that because the eclipse is going to occur right as the kids uh, would be in the carpool line. So that'd be just, you can see how that'd be kind of chaos for teachers trying to keep them from looking at it and trying to keep the moms and the dads moving in the carpool line while it's eclipsing and I just act like mass chaos and hard to keep the kids from looking at it if they're in the car, or they're on the bus, while people are driving, it's too much. So they just said, forget it, whatever, we're gonna do an e-learning day. So the kids are gonna be home um, on Monday. Pickens is actually going to school. So uh, there will be school in Pickens on Monday, um, but uh, not for the other. So you need to make plans for that. I'm looking forward to it. I think the eclipse is really cool. I like my, my kids and I loved the one in 2017. We did it up big. Um, we were in the path of totality then. So it actually was huge here. Um, this time we are not in the direct path of the totality. So what does it mean? Even though you're hearing a ton of buzz about it nationally, uh, we're probably going to see about 80 to 85% coverage. In other words, moon covering the sun. So it's only going to cover it 80 to 85%. It's not going to be a full eclipse like what we saw in 2017. Again, because we're not in the path of the totality. So uh, where is, well, that's everywhere from basically Texas, Northeast up through in Texas, parts of Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Kentucky, Indiana, and Ohio. So um, they're seeing, don't use the 2017 glasses from that eclipse. Um, but the eclipse itself, uh, which I know we're going to go out and take a look at, uh, is going to be around 3.05 p.m. on Monday, April 8th. So if you have something planned for there where you're going to drive somewhere or come back from somewhere or I, I don't know, just keep in mind on Monday that will be going on. I don't know how it's going to affect traffic and other stuff going on. So, um, it's, um. The, uh, Maggie Connolly, who's a planetarium specialist at Roper Mountain Science Center, says, so it's not going to be a full eclipse like last time, but it's still going to get darker. It's still going to get a little quieter. So it's definitely still worth checking out. Um, but they want to make sure people understand it's not going to be the same as 2017 unless you are traveling to the path of the totality. By the way, people going nuts here. That path of the totality, if you Google Airbnb, record breaking bookings. I mean, these just city after city after city fully and completely booked in their Airbnb is just people who want to see it. And unfortunately, you had to book months ahead to get those bookings. And now guess what? In much of the path of the totality, it's going to be partly cloudy to pretty cloudy. So what you'll be able to see, I don't know, we're going to have that same forecast here essentially on Monday. They're saying at this point. So um, what you'll be able to see, I don't know. But uh, I know we'll be stepping outside as a family just to see. Uh, what's going on and I've already got the glasses and all that stuff. By the way, um, if you're wanting to get those glasses, and again, they're seeing the 2017 ones, um, you shouldn't use them. Um, what you should do is look for the ISO stamp of approval. So uh, what that means is International Organization for Standardization. So they checked out glasses, approved certain manufacturers' glasses. The ISO number is 123122. So if you're shopping, you want to write that down, ISO 123122. So you want to see ISO on the side and that. And you also want to buy from a reputable person because just like 2017, there was a huge problem with essentially counterfeiters. We'll just stamp that on the side and sell it, but they're not supposed to. So you want to get it from a reputable seller as well. Like, I don't know at this point if I'd try to buy it on, well, I'm not going to go into that, but yeah, you can figure out what a reputable seller is. Texture writes path of totality. Sounds ominous. Folks, just texture rates. Hey, Tara, what kind of kids are parents raising that can't handle an eclipse? Um, kindergartners. They're raising kindergartners and first grade. Now, I'm going to give parents a little break here. You got little ones in the car. You're driving with them. You know how well they listen. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, if you've got a high school kid you don't have control of, that's a problem at that point. But, you know, little kids, they are kind of hard to, like, hurting cats sometimes. You don't want to be in the car driving home from school going, wait, no, no, don't look, no, wait, no, it'll burn your eyes. I, I actually get it. 
Uh, texture writes, hey, Tiros, from cloud cover during it, the eclipse isn't necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes the clouds can act as filter so that you can see it less unsafely. Okay. Uh, texture writes, uh, we'll never survive a nuclear attack. We can't even deal with a solar eclipse without worrying about chaos. Uh, texture rates, all districts in Anderson County of School Monday. Thank you for the reminder. Texture rates, you're spot on with your Ukrainian analysis. Liars in the media need to stop saying that Ukraine is a democracy. It is a totalitarian state. Uh, there is no press. Uh, folks, journalists for many years disappeared there. If you criticize the regime, they will disappear you, just like in Russia. There is no difference. We do not need to be in the middle of this. And folks, if you follow me for years, I was covering Ukraine when it wasn't cool. I was covering Ukraine when left-wing publications were very worried about the Obama regime backing neo-Nazis there. Neo-Nazis with an unbroken line to Adolf Hitler. And we had left them in power in Ukraine for good reason, actually. The CIA did as a counterweight to Russia. That's why that they were the only people not pro uh, persecute, uh, prosecuted at Nuremberg. Our, our government intervened there to keep that from happening because... They had intelligence used to us. We used them to overthrow the duly elected government of Ukraine and cause chaos and bloodshed where there was none. That was us. We did all of that. We need to stay out of it. It's too dangerous. Just stay out of it. Again, texture rates, you were spot on with your Ukraine analysis. Liars in the media will uh, need to stop saying that Ukraine is a democracy. It's a totalitarian state. There is no press. There is no elections. There's a police state that rounds up opposition and kills them. Google Gonzalo Lira, an American who was abducted and killed. Yes, we I, I did an extensive coverage of Gonzalo Lira. He was on the ground there telling the truth. Uh, Ukraine didn't like it. They picked him up once and tortured him. He's an American citizen where he was an American citizen. The second time they got him again as he was trying to escape the country and they killed him. An American citizen. This is not a country. It's worth getting into a nuclear conflict over. It's not. It's not our business. It's Europe's business. It's their back door. Leave them alone. Just just leave it alone. Texture rates, Tira. The only thing that's happening now is we are en enriching U.S. military contractors and Ukrainian oligarchs, including Zelensky. Hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians are, Ukrainians are dying and potentially millions around the world if we don't stop these sociopaths. Yeah, and by that, I think you, I assume you mean the sociopaths in Washington, particularly in the Biden administration, who the reason we're talking about this this morning, trying to figure out how to get in a war. And now Antony Blinken saying, hey, let's go ahead and take NATO. Let's go ahead and take Ukraine into NATO, even though they're actively fighting a war. NATO has never done that before. In fact, it's against their policy. If you're actively in a war, of course you don't get into NATO because then we would be obliged to fight that war for you. So this is a sign of their desperation to get into World War III. They want it badly. They may succeed between Israel and Iran. They're, they're trying that real hard too. Uh, just hoping for some kind of nuclear break so they can get into World War III. I have never seen more destructive people in my life. And you know, I say they're trying to get into World War III because nobody could literally be this dumb. I mean, there's, there's no, you couldn't be this dumb. You'd have to be doing it deliberately.
Well, great sports weekend this weekend, too. Everything else going on. Um, I, according to the CIA, incoming attack, Iran hitting Israel back, scheduled for, I guess, today. Solar eclipse for Monday. And one of the coolest sports um, weekends in a while, not in terms of the size of the teams involved, but maybe just the reputations of their players. Uh, one of the coolest things to be going on this weekend is NC State versus Purdue. I am not a sports fan. I'm going to pretend to be that I could you know, do any half as well as the guys who do sports radio in the city. But um, I am fascinated by that because to win nine games in a row and get to where they are right now, Wall Street Journal reporting the other day, the odds of that for NC State, one in 23,000 in that all-famous basketball tournament. One in 23 so we're truly seeing something that we're not going to see in our lifetimes. I'm very much like the solar eclipse if you live in the path of totality. Um, and that's what makes it so cool. It's kind of almost miraculous. Um, so that's why if everybody where you work is buzzing about Purdue versus NC State, it really is buzzworthy. If you look at it just in the tournament basis, not looking at the whole season, but the tournament is one in 88 percent. I'm sorry, one in 88 chance of getting this far. And overall, given the season that NC State had, one in 23,000 chance. To put that in perspective, um, you know, you have a bet, they had a better chance of getting hit by lightning. Yeah. So it's really, really cool. Uh, and young women, um, a lot of young women, a lot of just, you know, sports folks who normally wouldn't watch a women's basketball team are going to be watching Caitlin Clark and Paige. Uh, Buckers, uh, you know, face off at, uh, you know, a, a, what what will be the game of a lifetime. Um, and the reason uh, for that with with Caitlin Clark is she is just a, you know, once in a lifetime player. Uh, and everybody's going to be watching her as as well. Uh, and in fact, it's one of the top searches right now on Google. When does Caitlin Pl Clark uh, play next? So uh, you can watch her play live as well uh, in the game this weekend. So you can check out the NCAA tournament schedule, TV channel, all that stuff. So um, that is all going on. The Biden administration is using the distraction of all this to attempt to start World War III, because that is exactly what they are doing, and they know what they're doing. Nobody could possibly be this dumb. That is impossible. We'll get back into that. Uh, in just a minute, a lot of folks coming, you know, I, I just, the, the interest in this solar eclipse is like nothing I've seen. They're always big. Okay. The one in 2017 was big, but just some of the conspiracy theories out there. I had this one texted to me today explaining why people are so into it. They're so into this that the Airbnbs in the path of totality have record setting bookings. There's people flying into the country to watch this. The plane flights that will fly along the path of totality during the eclipse are completely sold out. In fact, they had to add more. Texture writes, and this is what people are buzzing about. I'm just going to read it, okay, so you'll know what the buzz is. Seven years ago, the path of totality went through seven cities named Salem, which means peaceful, safe, complete, and perfect. Seven years later, the path of totality will pass over seven cities named Nineveh, a wicked city, Worthy of destruction. That's a whole lot of sevens in biblical meaning. Just saying, yeah, throw in the devil comment and the red heifer. I'm not even going to explain that. Just Google it. People are getting a little kooky, I think, about this. Well, okay. So, look, I looked it up. You know how many cities are in the path of totality? 2,300. So, when you look at the odds that a city, most cities got their names in the path of totality, what, in the last 100, 200, 300 years, what would they have been named after? They'd have biblical names. A lot of cities have biblical names. So when you're talking 2,300 cities and given the age of the city, the odds they'll have a biblical name are pretty high. I mean, I bet I could cook up a pretty good conspiracy theory for just about any solar eclipse if I just went through the list of cities. I bet I could come up with something really cool. So I'm kind of rolling my eyes at this a little, I got to tell you. I, 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 uh, I do not think uh, that the end is coming. Uh, unless the Biden administration does succeed in starting World War III, and, and they have some pretty good bids going right now. 
Uh, texture rates, it's so considerate that the CIA gives us advance notice of these attacks they are trying to provoke. It makes scheduling my calendar so much easier. Smart butt. Love a texter like that. Thank you for your text. 71307. Uh, texture rates, Miss Tara, why are there still Palestinian refugees after 76 years asking for a friend? Because uh, the left keeps propping them up. Texture rates, they have to have World War III. Like John Kerry said, they got to reduce carbon emissions by reducing the peasant population. Now, you know what I think? I think, I think Tucker Carlson is the one who has nailed this. They want World War III with a nuclear-armed foe because nobody cares about wars anymore without a nuclear-armed foe. Nobody cares. We're like, yeah, war, okay, whatever. Um, and he says it's because they want to enrich themselves with all their contractor friends, true, but all because they give a lot of donations of political year, but also because they want the censorship and speech crackdown that they would legally have or could argue they should have in a nuclear-armed conflict. So if they can get into a conflict with a nuclear armed country, pick one, Russia is their top choice, um, then they can get these extra crackdown speech patterns. I mean, think about it. And you can see it too. Tucker Carlson's right on this. Think about it. I mean, they've already used uh, Russia collusion, Russian disinformation for massive crackdowns, and we're not even in a war. So if we could just be in a war with a nuclear armed country like Russia without any nukes actually striking, and if you listen to the interviews they do, they'll say, oh, they're not going to use the nukes. Shoot. No. But they'll censor like they're going to use the nukes. It's all about power. Uh, texture rights. Uh, where'd it go? If this eclipse. Uh, what do you say? Tara, um, Tara, exactly where. Uh, where we can't. They. Um, Tara, they will hold a draft if we go to war. Could you even imagine? Another text writes, hey, Tara, this eclipse has more conspiracies than anything I've ever seen. Me do. This is over the top. Text writes, uh, Tara, some, uh, yeah, okay, and I already read that one. Yeah, some cloud cover during the eclipse isn't necessarily a bad thing. P keep people safe in terms of staring right at it. Uh, so, yeah, and I'm usually see the text that I'm getting. And look, I'm I'm going to be respectful of people sending them. Okay, people believe what they believe, um, but texture rates. Tira seven is the number of spiritual completion message from God for our eyes only. Again, I bet you I could do this with any any path of totality, given how many cities are in the path, and I bet I could find something cool and numerical to divide or multiply and get the numbers I wanted. Texture writes, I'm so disappointed here. I thought you were a conspiracy theorist. No, no, no. I'm a conspiracy realist. I tell you which conspiracies are actually real while the FBI is still censoring them. And then, as you know, I take credit for getting it right, which I always do in the months and years later. Now, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm a conspiracy realist. That's why my track record is what it is. And it is excellent.
Headline, UK Daily Mail, migrants in Mexico hoping to cross the southern border, interviewed by the UK Daily Mail, say they want Biden to win in November because if Trump triumphs, they'll never be allowed into the U.S. <laughs> they don't even live here yet, and they already know. While the Democrats continued to lie, oh, no, 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 the border's not broken because of Joe. Yes, it is. Even the illegals who we invited to come here know that. As we continue to pretend, it's just not so. All right, pollster Scott Rasmussen just got a polling result. After years and years of polling, he says, is his most terrifying. I think this is so interesting. What is the most terrifying polling result Scott Rasmussen has ever gotten? Well, he just did a poll where he asked Americans, would you rather have your candidate win by cheating or lose playing fair. Okay, to me, this is actually the shocking result. Among all Americans, just 7% said they want their candidate to win by cheating. Wow. People in America are better people than I thought. Just 7%. So to me, that's the shocker. But Rasmussen shocker, more than a third of the elite 1% he surveyed would condone cheating. And he defined his elite in the poll as making more than $150,000 a year, primarily living in larger urban areas. So these are high dollar liberals. And they're like, nah, a third of them like, yeah, no, let's cheat. It's cool. Why? They believe they should rule. They believe they are better than everybody else. And this may be why they're so offended when we mention the very clear evidence that funny stuff was going on in the swing states because they know. They know. That's what I think.
From the path of the, what would you say, it? partial totality? I don't know how you'd refer to that. Yeah, we're going to get, uh, it'll be Monday, 80 to 85% coverage of the sun. Not as spectacular as what we saw in 2017. You won't get the full silence. You won't get the full dark, but it'll still be pretty cool, according to scientists at Roper Mountain um, Science Center. I thought, you know what? I thought that the, the, um, because it was really the first solar eclipse I, re I really tuned into as an adult. And maybe I tuned into it because the kids were so into it in 2017, where I really noticed the sound. The sound part was the coolest to me because we live right on the edge of a forest on a hill. It's always very noisy back there if you're listening for nature things, birds and bugs and stuff. And to hear it go just eerie silence in the middle of the day. And then the coolest part to me all at once as the eclipse sort of subsided a little bit at one exact instant, it all started again. The birds, the insects, it was like somebody went like that, just snapped a fan. I'm like, how do they all know on cue? This is the moment to, I don't know, must be something in their brains, a certain amount of light returning will trip. I don't know, but it was, it was not like, hey, a couple little startups here or there in terms of noise. It was just bam, the kickoff and he came back. The total silence was eerie. It was the coolest part to me. So they're saying we're not going to get total silence. We're not going to get total coverage, but it should be pretty cool to watch at 80 to 85%. So uh, it's going to be at about 3.05, the solar eclipse on Monday. Um, and we're going to have, you know, about a half an hour before, half an hour after of kind of that really cool, weird light that you get. So um, there will not, uh, this will be the last visible eclipse in the U.S. until 2044. So you're going to have to take care of yourself. Keep your health up if you want to see that one. All right. Meanwhile, more just freak show level of bizarreness from Joe Biden. This isn't right wing or left wing. This is freak show stuff that Donald Trump would have never survived. Do you know what uh, Biden just did? Biden told the chairman she lie again. He and Chairman Xi, his friend, his good friend, he always stands up for Chairman Xi, doesn't, does not criticize Chairman Xi, loves Chairman Xi. He and Chairman Xi, who are very good friends, as you know, in this fantasy. He and Chairman Xi, he explained again to a Greek of, a, a group of Greek voters yesterday. They were, they track, because they're such good friends. They traveled 17,000 miles together and they stopped on a plateau was a Tibetan plateau and they were kind of, you know, vibing together and getting deep about life. And that makes sense. His fellow Marxists and communists, they would have a lot in common and want to be totalitarian. So uh, I could see them getting along, or at least in Joe's mind, him being the equal of she. And that's what he's trying to tell us. He thinks he's chairman, she's equal and that they are friends. None of this is true, by the way. None of this actually happened. So after traveling together for 17,000 miles, because they're such great friends, uh, she was, of course, seeking Joe's wisdom, as everybody does, and wanted to know, well, I'll, I'll let Joe tell you the lie again. As I play this, understand, this has been debunked 21 times by the mainstream media. 20, I'm sorry, 20 times. This is the 21st time he has told this lie about Chairman Xi. I cannot imagine what she thinks about this. I was once asked by Xi Jinping and... I traveled 17,000 miles with him in Tibetan. I was out at the Tibetan Plateau and he looked at me and he said to me, can you define America? And I could say the same thing if he asked me to define Greece. I said, yes, one word. And I mean it sincerely. It's, reg it's recorded. I said one word, possibilities. Possibilities. I was once. It's a total lie. And you know one of the tells when Biden's lying, you don't even have to check the record. He'll say, it's recorded. It's, you know, serious, really, seriously. It that's, that's the tell he's lying. I mean it sincerely. It's, reg it's recorded. No, it's not. didn't happen. So, the headline that should have run in America if we had an honest media, but we do not, ran instead the UK Daily Mail again. Headline, Biden, 81, repeats lie. He's traveled 17,000 miles with Chinese leader Xi Jinping before calling himself O'Biden. Yes, he said he served in the O'Biden uh, presidency. Whatever that is. 
UK Daily Mail. President Joe Biden has repeated a lie about traveling 17,000 miles with the Chinese premier in his latest flubbed speech. This time, he was uh, telling it um, at a White House event Thursday to mark Greek Independence Day. Biden restated the claim while recounting an anecdote about he and President Xi, had, uh, how President Xi had once asked him to define America. Uh, but as the UK Daily Mail points out, the president is fond of the claim, which has earned him a bottomless Pinocchio rating from the Washington Post. The Post describes the distinction as false or misleading statements repeated so often they become a form of propaganda. In other words, they are begging him to shut up. Just stop. Joe Biden is a sick man. We documented Barack Obama's lies, and they are of a different nature, as I've explained many times. Lies of many politicians. They're convenient exaggerations. Again, my program saved 5,000 lives. Well, yours killed 25,000 people. Well, come on, we know none of that's true, right? Those are lies that they tell. They're not trustworthy people, most politicians, but they're not mentally ill either. Those lies have a purpose. This lie has no purpose. He is sick. He is a compulsive liar. But what it shows us is that he thinks, in his mind, Chairman Xi, the brutal, murderous dictator, is his friend. He identifies with Chairman Xi. He admires Chairman Xi. In his mind, they try, because his mind is sick, they traveled 17,000 miles together. Now, what actually happened, according to the Washington Post, at times, they have traveled 17,000 miles total while going to the same place, but they were not together, and they certainly weren't sitting there at sunset on the Tibetan plateau. Sometimes it's sunset in this lie. And she certainly never was seeking Biden's advice as an admired and trusted friend. They are not friends, except in Biden's own mind. And you know what? That's dangerous as heck. That is dangerous as heck in a week where this is a news story. Here we go. A new report says since he took office, more than 140,000 Chinese nationals have illegally entered the United States, not including gotaways, and nearly all of them have been single adult men. But see, she is his friend, so no need to worry. Even when those illegal immigrants open illegal Chinese bioweapons labs on our soil, complete with humanized mice bred to carry and spread COVID. No, because his friend Chairman Xi would never, I mean. But they're good friends. In Joe's sick, sick mind. Folks, and I, I tell you, this is not partisan, okay? I, I And you know me, I criticize Trump. I hit him when he gets it wrong. I'd hit him on this. I'd hit him hard. I would say he needs help. Joe Biden does not need power. He needs help. And former CIA director Mike Pompeo, Pompeo former head of, uh, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, explains why these Chinese illegals who Joe Biden's friend she sent are so scary. There's no chance that this is accidental, that these folks are actually seeking asylum. The Chinese Communist Party has enormous control of who gets to leave their country. And so uh, there's something afoot here when we now have mm. more having come across the border in the last two years than the previous decade combined. Uh, a real risk to American national security. Yeah, Pompeo went on to explain. When a Chinese national travels here, and if they're from China, they are traveling here, are they not, at the express permission of the Communist Party of China, correct? Absolutely certain. So that's, that's 140,000 Chinese approved illegals coming here. A lot of them have very nice roller bags. We saw that video. Um, <laughs> what's, what's going on? Are, there, are they preparing for what they think is a Biden second term? We know for sure that we don't have any idea who they are. That is, right. not only are, there mo are they mostly gotaways, uh, but even the vetting that we're doing of them is just a handful of simple questions, and then we release them. So we know for sure we don't know who they are. Second, we know the Chinese Communist Party knows they're here. And if even a fraction, imagine just 1% of those tens of thousands of folks are here on a nefarious mission on behalf of the Chinese Communist Party directly. This, this is dangerous. This is an enormous national security risk to the United States to have that many Chinese nationals coming here with the permission of our adversary, Xi Jinping, uh, th there will be a bad day, Laura. And I, I fear that we don't even oh. have our hands around now. who's coming in, where they are, 
and President Biden doesn't give a rip about it. No, because he and she are friends in his sick mind. In his sick mind. And and Biden talks this way lovingly about she after his own FBI director in January and February warned us, presented to us as fact, Chinese hackers, Chinese nationals want to, are trying to bring down our grid, are trying to collapse food and water delivery. And in case of water purification, water treatment plants basically is what they've attacked. We found the spyware. They are going after our energy plants. God forbid, I hope that's not the nuclear plants. And he's warning us and saying this could compromise food delivery. This could compromise water. This could compromise national security. This could collapse the grid. And Joe Biden thinks Chairman Xi, in his mind, because he's sick, is his friend. Folks, this country is in mortal peril every day the sick man heads it. And again, that's not a right wing or left wing thing. That's This is a sick, sick man who, for the 21st time, told this Chairman Xi lie yesterday humiliating him. Does no one tell him on his staff? Dude, you've been debunked by the Washington Post. You and she are not friends. He's not your friend. You did not travel 17,000 miles together or even 1,700 miles together. You did not have a sunset conversation on the Tibetan plateau where she sought your advice. You're not friends. Stop it.
imagine living in a country where the police have total power to determine whether to put you in prison for something you said? Where the pressure is on your family members and friends to report you to the police for what you said? Whether you can do up to seven years in prison for what you said? Where the power by law has been taken from the courts to determine whether what you said is actionable and given to the police. Do you know of a country like that? China's like that. China's been like that for a long time. Same with Cuba. Definitely same with North Korea. They just kill you. They don't even bother with the trial. And you know what other countries like that? Because I'm not talking about China right now. Scotland is like that. So is Ireland. Remember when I read to you early on in my time here from that police report, a policing reform report by Barack Obama, and their goal was if the police were so evil that they had to be taken from local control to control the mayors and city councils and county commissions and given to the federal government. And the plan published by Barack Obama was that the federal government would start paying the salaries of the captains and the sergeants and the leaders of the police and police would answer to them. And then eventually all police forces would be federal. So would not the 911 system. That was the left's plan. They've been working diligently at it ever since to um, take credibility away from the police so they can federalize them in the way they have the FBI. And now the FBI answers almost exclusively to the Democrat Party. Doesn't matter if Republicans are in power. That plan. They just implemented it in Scotland. And it is terrifying. It is terrifying what is going on in Scotland. It's called the Hate Crime and Public Order Act of 2021. If you are perceived as looking at your victim in a hostile way, you can be prosecuted. Their word against yours. You have to prove your innocence. And you know who ultimately gets to decide if a crime has been committed? It's not the courts. It's the police. Where'd they get that kind of power? Oh, you'll love this. They implemented Barack Obama's policing plan because we know police are bad and they're racist and bad. So we cannot trust the people of towns and councils and yeah, to control them. We have to federalize them because of course the federal government is gooder and better or something. So they did. They did in Scotland. They created what they call a unitary police force called Police Scotland. And what that means is that those local officers who used to answer to local leaders, i.e. you, uh, where those local leaders could be easily removed, now they answer to a centralized government police force. So that's step one. We don't have it here yet. What they're aiming for, this is why they're constantly de uh, demonizing the police, but you never hear them demonize the FBI. They love the FBI. They just built them a new headquarters and increased their budget uh, by $100 million as a reward. So this is what is going on in Scotland. I don't think people understand why J.K. Rowling, the, who wrote the Harry Potter series, uh, issued a, a series of, of tweets mocking transgender rapists who now say they're women and then asking the Scottish police authority uh, whether they were going to arrest her. They And the reason she did is because the training package they went through had plans, listen to this, to send police to comedy shows, plays, speeches, and people's homes if they misgendered somebody, if they said something racially offensive. If you say something in your home and your you know, wife who you're on the verge of getting a divorce from decides she can go to a public reporting place, several of them are sex shops, ironically, and report you for what you said in the privacy of your own home, and the police have the authority to investigate. In fact, the Prime Minister of Scotland said he didn't think it should be incumbent upon him or even those who wrote the law to decide what offensive speech was. That power should, re should re reside with the police, the police state. Scotland, y'all, Scotland. By the way, they have created almost exactly the identical law in Ireland. But there's something about these laws we've never seen before. 
and I documented this on yesterday's Battleground podcast. If you want to understand the way society is being organized and reorganized, you need to listen to yesterday's Battleground America podcast. I think it's one of the most important I've done. And I only really promote it when I feel like I've just knocked it out of the ballpark in terms of after you listen to it, you're never going to look at society ag- the same way again and what the left is doing again the same way. What this speech law does, this is not the standard, hey, if you criticize the Soviet Union, you'll disappear. If you criticize the government in North Korea, you'll disappear. It's not that. It creates special classes. If you speak against them in a way that causes them offense, and that's up to the police, whether you cause them offense, even if you didn't mean to, you could be arrested. You could do up to seven years in prison. However, if you are not a member, if the, if the person you ha- who, who is being criticized is not a member of the special class, ah, you can criticize them all day long. In fact, members of the special classes can criticize whoever they want. So they're doing a follow-up bill to this called their misogyny speech bill. What does this mean? Well, you cannot say anything negative about, wi- about women that gives them offense. However, women as a now privileged class can trash men all they want. See how this works? Extra rights for the politically correct classes, no rights for anybody else. Why? So that there cannot, there will not, there will never be political debate again. Because you debate somebody who is your better, someone from a privileged political class. This has just been created in uh, Scotland. They have this now in Ireland. They have this now in Canada. Uh, You criticize them and they take offense, you could go to prison. But they can criticize you because you are not uh, listed in the law as a protected class. So you want to take a guess who's not a protected class? White Christian males. There you go. Although, on, and the good news is, the really killer thing, this thing was, uh, this horrific law, this police state law, because that's what this is, was implemented on Monday. There have now been 4,000 reports filed. And do you know who the number one offender is? Rishi Sunyak, the liberal socialist leader and prime minister of Scotland who gave an incredibly racist speech against white males. People turned him in by the thousands and demanded he be investigated. So there was that. By the way, he got more reports than J.K. Rowling. A lot of people want her arrested too. Scotland, y'all. Scotland, not China, not North Korea. And the left would love to do it here.
Texture rates, if you go to Scotland or Ireland, Ireland, does the law apply to you as a visitor? Yes, it does. You could end up a political prisoner. In fact, I'm only, I'm, I'm waiting for that to happen. Wondering if Biden wins, if he will extradite Americans to Ireland and Scotland for, for, for thought crimes. But this next decade is going to get crazy. It's going to be absolutely nuts. Texture rates, hey, Terry, do you think our phones check to see who is listening to this radio station? Folks, everything is recorded. Of course, it's, I mean, look, we've got an administration that where the Treasury forced the banks to turn over the let the name of anybody and the transaction who purchased a religious text. You think they're not watching everybody and everything we do? Of course they are. Everybody's got a folder. It's digital, I'm sure, but it's a folder. Text to rates, hey, Tara, Charlie Kirk interviewed a pastor of color in Australia who said that police come to talk to him regularly to ask questions about his sermons. He said he knows he will eventually be jailed. Now, the texture rates. Um, uh, where did this go? Well, not to worry. That couldn't happen in America. We are protected by our Constitution. Just ask all those people locked up in God knows where um, who were in or around D.C. on January 9th. Now, the text rates, hey, Terry, yesterday's Battleground America podcast is not on Odyssey. I know. I'm so sorry. Um, that's national, so we don't, can't really do much about it right here, like locally. But I always have an alternate link always up on all of my social media. So Twitter, Gab, Getter, Facebook, while well, they still let me do it. Uh, and it's uh, up on Twitter, too. So it's always pinned to the top. So you can find it uh, in those places. But I apologize for that. Um, okay, so again, note to self, 3.05 Monday. It's kind of cool because it's going to be the last visible or last eclipse visible in the United States of America until 2044. So if you're thinking I'll catch the next one, well, you're going to have to get on a plane to do that. Um, it's not going to be as spectacular, the eclipse won't, as the one in 2017 because we were in the path of totality at that time. So it was a full eclipse for us. Uh, this one is going to be 80 to 85%. So that should be cool. To the extent we can see it, because uh, we're looking at some cloud cover on Monday um, to, you know, partial to a lot of cloud cover. We'll see what happens with that over the weekend. I know I'm going to be watching the weather on it because I, my, me and the kids had such a blast watching it last time. I'm really excited about watching it again. I got my glasses. I'm ready to go. So, uh, but that's going to be 3.05 on Monday. And of course, just a reminder to parents, Greenville County Schools are going to an e-learning day. Same with Spartanburg County, all districts, Cherokee County, Abbeville County, Lawrence District 55 is going to do early dismissal because that'll be like right in the middle of carpool line, 305, total chaos. Uh, normal school day, though, for Pickens, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but uh, be sure to be aware of it, and you should get the kind of really cool effects that everybody loves a Eclipse for probably about half an hour before and half an hour after the weird light. The change in the sounds and the bugs and the birds going. They're saying not totally silent this time, but quieter as they become confused about what time of day that it is. So it should be neat for uh, everybody to watch and tune into. Again, that is Monday. The peak of it will be at 305, but you're going to get sort of the funky effects going into it and coming out of it. So plan your schedule around that for Monday.
from the you can't make this up file and the they always accuse you of what they're doing file this incredible headline from the los angeles times they're in terror they're they're very very afraid of a trump presidency you know why listen to this headline so you can tell me what is wrong with this headline headline los angeles times this has gone viral Trump says he'll jail his opponents. Members of the House January 6th committee are preparing. Trump says he'll jail his opponents. Says? Okay, what Trump was talking about was cleaning out the people who are using lawfare to try to jail him. So let me translate. What the left is actually saying here is we are terrified if we cannot get Trump in prison on Trump up fake charges by the election that he's going to clean house. That's what they're saying. He's going to clean house to stop us from putting people who challenge us in prison as a way to not have to argue the facts before the American people. How I did, you know, I wonder how their little minds work. The sheeple, you see a headline like that. Trump says he'll jail his opponents. What do they go talk to all their little liberal friends? Oh, he might put us in jail. He might put people in jail. They're trying to put him in jail right now. A judge whose family has pocketed potentially $30 million as profit for prosecuting him is trying to put him in prison right now. His daughter, who is 34, is the president uh, of a group, she the, the political fundraising group. She only has two clients. The Democrat Senatorial Committee. They're trying to get Democrat senators elected. And Adam Schiff. She has raised $93 million for them, primarily with funded raising appeals, bragging about how her daddy uh, and the others trying Trump are going to put him in prison. And apparently Democrats respond really well to that because they like the idea of jailing their enemies. In other words, anyone who might credibly question what they're doing, as Trump has, $93 million raised, $30 million of it paid to the company by just two clients, Adam Schiff, Adam Schiff, and the Democrat Senatorial Committee. Okay. <coughs> so, knowing that, there is a law in New York that says your relatives out to the fourth degree, if you are a judge, cannot profit from your case cannot pray. it is illegal what this judge is doing illegal and the media is outraged they are raging this morning because democrats thrive in darkness raging about how dare trump talk about this judge's little girl with well, a little girl in seven she's 34 and she has profited uh, I don't know if she's taken home all the money, but she's the president of the, the organization that has done it, that has collected $30 million from Democrat Party. And all Trump's saying is, this is illegal. You can't, you can't do that. There's, there's law in the books. You can't do it. Judge gags him from talking about her profiting. Do you think he's going to be able to get a fair trial? This is something I would expect out of Argentina. This is something that I would expect out of a, you know, something you would legitimately call a regime. So the judge has gagged Trump. Trump's trial starts on the 15th of April. Uh, this is the headline uh, today from Semaphore. As general election heats up, Trump camp prepares to be frozen in court. As general election heats up, Trump camp prepares to be frozen in court. Donald Trump's presidential campaign, long used to juggling, ju juggling challenges that come with running for office, while also battling multiple legal issues, all of them from corrupt Democrat judges like this one who clearly is breaking the law. He himself is a criminal who should be prosecuted. At a minimum, should be pulled off the case. He's breaking the law in New York. And Democrats just shrug. They don't care. Trump is headed into even more uncharted territory, fighting a general election while sitting in court for his first criminal trial, where the judge has total control over what he says. And right now, at least, Trump cannot criticize the judge for breaking the law. What a scumbucket. That, folks, the how is this happening 
in America. I don't, I just, I, I've lost the thread. I don't understand. Oh, well, the left fear mongers that, you know, Trump might jail. They say jail his opponents if he's elected and how terrible would that be? They're just upset that he might have the power to do what they're doing. He'd never get away with it. No, no, no. The media would go wild if Trump did what they're doing. Again, this is one of the clips of the week this week. Uh, This is Doug Schoen talking about this, this New York law on Fox News. In this case, I believe it goes beyond the appearance. I believe under 22 New York Code of Rules and Regulations, 100.2, that he must disqualify himself. That provides that if the judge has a relative to the fourth degree who has a substantial interest that could be affected by the proceeding, then he must recuse himself. And that's this case. The New York Post article is clear. This uh, this person, his daughter, held herself out as the digital persuasion director for Kamala Harris, now president of the company. He must disqualify himself. Yeah, again, she's president of the company. And in addition to working for the Harris campaign, uh, she has made $30 million for the company based directly off mailers, essentially bragging about the criminal prosecution of Donald Trump. Which, again, they're getting away with for one very simple reason. Trump has been cut off from the herd. You know, it's like when a wolf pack hunts, what do they do? When lions hunt, what do they do? They cut off uh, their target from the pack uh, so that others cannot defend them. That's what they've done, and Republicans are letting this happen with no complaint. They are the Republicans are doing almost as good of a job of pretending this is legitimate as the Democrats are. A legitimate use of our courts that this judge isn't breaking the law. Um, and it's just really going to be hard to watch Trump sit there, knowing how profoundly corrupt and how much of a lawbreaker the judge is who's trying him. A guy who donated to Joe Biden, by the way. It's out. It's outrageous. It's a true kangaroo court. Meanwhile, this is interesting because it started before that bridge collapse in Baltimore. Uh, there's going to be hearings today, congressional hearings about Chinese cranes, spy cranes in our ports, spy cranes that come equipped with digital equipment that can interfere in communication. Really? Uh Uh-huh. If you Google this, uh, you could see the concern goes back. The earliest article I could find out was like March 4th, but I didn't look too deeply into it. I may go back further than that. So this was known about these cranes and this digital equipment. um, And they're they're couching it in terms of spy equipment, but apparently it has several technical capabilities in terms of interference in our ports. When the investigation by the Republican Congressional Committee began, um, the worry was that they would be used for spying and uh, maybe for some destructive capability at our key ports. Did Baltimore have any of these cranes? I mean, I know six and a half hours later, the FBI said there was no terror attack, there was no meddling, there was nothing, just an accident. So, I mean, you know, six and a half hours, we could all figure that out in six and a half hours for sure. I just wonder, like, what was on the cranes in Baltimore? I mean, I don't know. I don't know anything went, went on, but anyway, uh, Biden administration not interested in this, of course, because he thinks Chairman Xi is his friend. Weird, huh? The hearings on this were already planned before that bridge collapsed because of, I guess, technical problems on the boat. Could be a coincidence. I mean, I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see.
Well, if you want to hear sheer madness, and you know what? They're they're counting they're counting on that Americans are ignorant of the way that NATO works. That they won't understand what Antony Blinken just proposed and how civilizationally suicidal it is. How I just absolute Insanity. I mean, I, I don't know what else to, to call it. Antony Blinken just said with certainty that, and Van Greyjoy, uh, that NATO is going to take in Ukraine uh, this summer. That NATO is going to meet, they're all on board, they're going to take in Ukraine. What was NATO just caught doing? NATO, heads of NATO, uh, remember, the uh, Slovak president was so alarmed, he went and warned the world. The heads of NATO, i.e. the U.S., France, Germany, they're trying to figure out how to get in a war with Russia on Ukrainian soil. And he wanted to stop it, so he blew the whistle. He said, listen, I, I've been in their meetings. They're trying to go to war with Russia. I'm not talking about war where you send in some equipment and you know, just maybe send a few people covertly into the war zone to work the equipment or show the Ukrainians how to work the equipment. I'm talking about war. I'm talking about actual war, us versus Russia. I'm talking about Red Dawn type scenario, except in Ukraine with our soldiers on the ground. War with a nuclear armed country. So they all denied it after he accused them, except Macron, who's the head of France. He said, yeah, you know, I would like a war. And he said, I'm going to commit 20,000 troops I'm going to command a force of 60,000. Several other countries went along. So we're going to go, we're going to go right to Ukrainian territory. We're members of NATO and we're going to get in a war. Why would you do that? Because he's using those soldiers as bait. He's hoping they'll get hit, that the atrocity will be bad enough, that after Joe Biden is reelected in their world, that um, that they will be able to call on the U.S. to, hey, you know, send your soldiers. They have desperately been trying to get into a war since uh, since Obama was president they want a nuclear or they want a war with a nuclear country not a regular war americans don't care about those anymore they want the power it would give them to censor they want the money for their friends that war would generate i mean look what they've been able to do with censorship just claiming anything that looks makes democrats look bad is russian disinformation and should be censored what if we were in an actual conflict with a nuclear armed nation which is what they want. They seek it. They desperately want it. And Antony Blinken just proposed it. And I don't think people understand what he just proposed. Okay. Throughout the whole, what NATO says is, we're a bunch of nations. We agree that if one of us gets attacked, we're all going to mutually defend. Well, that's a joke, okay? The only people with the ability to go to war on behalf of the NATO nations really is us with the small assist from Germany and France and England. We're the only ones who have any kind of means to, to do this war, right? So throughout NATO's history, the tradition has been you do not get considered for membership, period, end of memo, if you are in a war, because that'd be dumb. If you're in a war and we take you in, NATO is basically a treaty. We're agreeing that we're going to defend you from all enemies. So if you're already in a war, that's like, hey, yeah, we're going to get in a war. And over the years, we have seen country after country after country turn down when they've said, hey, we want NATO membership. Because uh, they're in a war. Blinken knows this, okay? He's not dumb. These are, these are not dumb people. These are evil people. They want a war. So when he's walking around saying, yes, we're going to make sure that Ukraine is a member of NATO. We're going to, yeah, we're going, but they're at war. And not with just anybody, with Russia. Folks, Moldova can't join NATO. Why? Because they have been in a never-ending low-level conflict, not even a full-on absolute war with separatist Russian colonists. Not Russia, separatist Russian colonists. Georgia wanted to join too, but they've been unofficially at war since 2008. So they've turned down, no, no, we can't do that. We don't want to go to war on behalf of Georgia. So, so Blinken, in an absolute measure of desperation to get into war, because everything else they've tried hasn't worked, to get into a war with Russia. is saying, yeah, we'll just take Ukraine. In. Well, with the minute they do that, they would be required to defend Ukraine. And you, you guys who are in the military, you're going to war. For what? I can't tell you. I have no idea. I, I, don't, I do not know what we're, we would actually be fighting for, but we would be fighting. If you don't think they're serious, remember, just a few weeks ago, it leaked. They're trying to get into a ground war. They are planning for a ground war with Russia. 
not a surprise to listeners to this show or my Battleground America podcast, because weeks before that, the German war plans for the ground war in Ukraine leaked. They go through 2025, by the way, which makes me think they're trying to get into this war actually after Biden is reelected. They won't do it before. They were surprisingly detailed for how we'll all be fighting this war uh, in 25. This is sheer unadulterated stupidity. Really evil. Blink, yeah, Blinken's running a stupid trap right now. His stupid homicidal trap right now. He stepped off a plane. He knows what this means. We take Ukraine in. We are going to be on the ground fighting. Folks, again, Google Reuters, 90,000 strong force. Our troops are already drilling for ground war with Russia in Ukraine under the NATO banner. 90,000 strong. The drill started in January. And they did it to menace, Clinton, to, to menace uh, Putin, to try to drag him into the war. Then they stationed planes with nukes for the first time on the Russian border. And they put nukes on those planes for the first time NATO did. Just sitting there waiting, ready, menacing him on the border. That didn't do it either. They're not getting the response that they want because they want a war. So now that they've drilled, they've put the planes there. They're sending Macron and the troops out there to get hit, to dangle his bait in the theater. What more can they do? This, this. Now, the good news is Vladimir Putin is smarter than all of them so far, for the most part. And they've been trying to get into war with him since 2012 when our government went in over through the Ukrainian government. As by the way, the Washington Post and New York now admit, uh, New York Times now admit they've written, written that up in the last few weeks. It's an incredible admission. Went in there, overthrew the duly pro, pro-Russian elected president of Ukraine, attempted to assassinate him, installed the current government, and then that government began committed, committing genocide against uh, native Russian populations. They began bombing them and murdering them. They indiscriminately hit schools, neighborhoods, hospitals, apartment complexes with missiles in ethnic Russian areas. Russia then unofficially responded, but would not officially get into the war. So they couldn't get into the war that way. Again, the last duly, truly elected president was the one we tried to assassinate and overthrow. And still, Putin wouldn't take the bait. He quietly fought back, but he wouldn't take the bait. So we are getting more and more desperate folks. They want and they need a war. They're telling you what we're going to do, what's going to happen if we get into this war, if Biden is reelected, folks. I, I, it is a matter of our survival. They're also telling themselves because, I mean, they do TV interviews regularly. Oh, don't worry. Putin is not going to use nukes. He's no, he's not. Why are we lining up nukes on the border? What are we, folks, what are we even fighting over? Can you tell me that? What do we get if we win? Do we get a goldfish in a bag? He'll live for a couple of days once we take him home from the fair. What do we get? I don't know. So far, Putin's been smart enough and strong enough to avoid this, but um, I don't know how much he can do it long term. And you know what I tell you what my biggest fear is? <sighs> my biggest fear. They've already lied to you once. They lied to you one time because there were a pair of missiles that hit Poland. And they sent Zelensky out there to lie. Oh, those weren't ours. Ukraine, no, those aren't our missiles. And it tripped Article 4 of uh, the NATO agreement. Article 4 is where they investigate to get to Article 5, where we go to World War III. Zelensky lied. They were setting up a false flag. In other words, those missiles killed two farmers in Poland. Oh, no, no, no. Those are Russian missiles. Those aren't mine. Thankfully, we had a couple of honest politicians in Poland who said, no, 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 he's he's lying. Those are those are Ukrainian missiles. Zelensky had already come out and told the world they were Russian. Lied. Why? To try to get us into a conflict. They will do it again. Folks, we are walking on a power keg and every, just every day there's not a spark. Is a miracle with these lunatics in power.
And that's not the only nuclear war Joe Biden uh, may be in the middle of causing. Folks, do you remember the show how we've drawn the direct line between the pallets of cash that Barack Obama hid and sent ended up being $1.7 billion? He lied to Congress, by the way. He said, I was like $400 million. Well, he lied, lied, lied. Finally, men, you know, admitted it was almost $2 billion. Pallets of cash, unmarked bills that were sent to Iran. And they've been trying to get Iran nuclear ready for a long time. Okay, a few months ago, do you remember me reporting? You can Google this, too. Um, that Iran was on the verge of having nuclear weapons a few months ago. Well, when were they going to have them? Within a few months. So potentially now? Yeah, could be as early as now. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe they have them or maybe they're months away from them. You put that together with the warning that just came out from the CIA and it will send a chill down your spine. So basically what's happened here is that Israel hit Iran um, and you probably saw that, hit the Iranian consulate in Syria. CIA now warning, headline, CIA warns Iran will attack Israel within 48 hours. This was published yesterday. They're saying they think the ETA will be today. What a weekend, right? And we've got the incredible sports contest this weekend, NC State versus Purdue. Um, we've got the uh, ladies final four, which will be amazing. And then, you know, maybe actual war. I don't know. U.S. intelligence officials have branded Israel's strike on the Iranian consulate in Syria as reckless. And, of course, so they want Israel to take it and take it and take it but never respond, which means they'll just have to take it some more. The CIA has warned Israel that Iran will attack the country in the next 48 hours. Um, Iran is planning, is said to be planning by the CIA, a combined attack with a rain of drones and missiles fired from its bases at strategic locations inside Israel. Uh, the CIA has warned um, that uh, the Israeli strike could lead to a uh, wider war in the Middle East. So because if Iran hits them, I mean, they're going to hit back. What a mess. We had never had anything like Trump, like this under Trump, folks. What a mess. What a mess. And what's so scary about that, again, as we reported on this show, uh, and it was widely reported in international news, Iran is believed to be, a couple of months ago, it was reported Iran is believed to be just months away from having a nuclear bomb. And folks, we have green flagged that bomb every way we could. Including, because remember, they didn't have a missile delivered on, and Joe went, uh-oh, I'll help. We know we'll help. Remember on that first trip to Israel to allegedly support them, and I told you he's not. He's going to put the knife in their back. He's in the air and his administration, he hasn't landed. And the reason they waited till he was in the air is so that Israel couldn't slam the door in his face. They announced, uh, you know, they announced that uh, they were going to allow the sanctions to expire that block Iran from buying the missile that they need to deliver the nukes. It was only, I mean, Israel's number one on the list. You're on your way to Israel and you announce you're going to let the sanctions expire so that Iran, without fear, can then purchase the missile on which to, to launch the nuke. I mean, folks, that's tantamount to saying, go get them, boys. You go ahead and nuke Iran. I mean, Iran, you go ahead and nuke Israel. We got your back. I, I just, I talked about it for months because I was like, just, just, wow. And folks, you don't do, these people aren't dumb, they're evil. You don't do stuff. You're, nobody is this stupid, okay? They want a nuclear, for whatever reason, they want a nuclear armed Iran to hit Israel. Well, who's Israel, uh, who's Iran's number two favorite target? Us. We actually had documents leak from their army a number of years ago. Obama was in office at the time about how they wanted to use a nuclear armed missile to detonate it above the country as an EMP and take out our grid. So what do we do? No, we give them the missile. Why wouldn't we, right? We're suicidally, we're civilizational suicidal. I mean, civilizationally suicidal in this administration. They are. I mean, it's just, it's just nuts. Uh, but the CIA is right about one thing, at least in this article, uh, which is in the UK uh, Express, that th that this is going to cause a significant escalation. Now, why is Israel doing this? They are trying to hit the Iranian nuclear guard to punish them for ongoing plots to kill or kidnap Israeli Jews around the world. So it's the Soleimani model. It works. And they have to do it. They have to do it or they're going to be hunted by do like dogs uh, by Joe Biden in Iran. And folks... 
Iran is on the prowl for one reason. They, they know how to read the signs coming from Washington. Here, have a missile to deliver the nuke on. Yeah, I know y'all are. Be good, guys. Here, have $16 billion that we've just unfrozen for you. Do you need any more to buy that missile? Can we help you in any other way to get the nuke? Here, have some pallets of cash. They know how to read that, folks. When we have to hit them because it becomes embarrassing that they have hurt or killed 180 of our troops uh, or their proxies have, what does Joe Biden do? He gives them a 48-hour warning so they can everybody can move out so when we bomb them, we don't hurt them. They killed three of us. Permanent severe brain injury in 130 troops. So at least Israel got some revenge for us. Iran knows how to read this. Attaboy, attaboy, go get him. Go, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm, nuke Israel. What can we do to help? And the, the shocking thing is after all that carnage, the three dead on our bases, the two Navy SEALs at the bottom of the sea who were killed, uh, and they at the time, were they had caught Iran on the boat red-handed shipping uh, military equipment to Houthis so it could be used against us, our shippers, British shippers, and they ultimately would use that equipment to put a British ship at the bottom of the sea, not that specific equipment. We confiscated it, but equipment from Iran. Where'd they get the money from that? Gosh, the people could barely eat under Trump and they were on the verge of overthrowing their leaders. Yeah, because Joe Biden lifted the sanctions. And no matter how many of us they maim and kill, Joe won't put the sanctions back on. Because Joe wants them to have a nuclear weapon. That's how dumb these people are. I mean, just this hour, folks. I mean, you're looking at their busy little bees trying to get into a nuclear war with Russia over here and trying to start a nuclear war potentially between Israel and Iran over here. Again, I don't know if Iran has nukes, but I know this. Credible world bodies have reported in the last six months they are on the verge of having them. And we just green flag the whole thing by lifting the sanctions that prevent them from buying the missile building the missile, however they want to do it, building the, you know, getting the parts for the missile and assembling them, whatever, they could do it all now. They could go right to China. They can go right to Russia. Go, hey, can we have the parts for the missile now? Yeah, here, we'll pay for it with the money Joe gave us. See, American people don't know this. They do not understand how homicidal this Biden regime is, how much danger they're putting the world in. They are not just, I'm so sick of our cycle. Hey, they're weak. They're just weak in that bit. No, they're not weak. Nope, nope, nope. That's not what weakness looks like. This is strength. It is homicidal ma madness. It is strength. It is daring. It is cunning. It is active. It is the opposite of weak. It is evil. So all that's going on this weekend. I'm going to be kind of, you know, walking on eggshells at the end of the day to see what Iran does. It'll be interesting to see what they can do. Assuming they do not have nukes and there is no nuclear component to their strike back at, at, at Israel, please God. What do they have short of the nukes? What damage can they do? Is the CIA wrong here? Maybe they will be. I don't know. I hope that pray they're wrong. Or is there going to be a strike on Israel today? Can you imagine? Tr Trump had peace. We had peace in the Middle East. We had peace. We had safe soldiers and safe Marines. Why do we have to do this? Let me tell you something. These are some evil, evil people. And Americans don't understand the half of it. And Texter writes, let the Europeans spend billions policing the oceans. Again, we wouldn't have to have our battleships babysitting uh, in the Red Sea if Joe Biden would stop funding the Iranians. All they do is turn around and give the, they buy new, you know, military hardware and give it to the Houthis to sing stuff. I mean, before Houthis, they're goat herders. They weren't even dangerous until Joe Biden came to office. Again, he did all of this. So, you know, when you say, when this texture says, let Europeans spend billions policing the oceans, okay, but why should they police the oceans if we're paying for their ships to be hit? We've unleashed the money. We have unleashed the oil. Why? Again, Trump had all this under control with sanctions, by the way. We didn't have to go running around in ships to keep people safe. Now we pay our enemies to hit us and our allies, and then we run around in ships trying to protect them. We are the truly the dumbest people on the earth. Truly. Subpar.
Text your rights. Hey, Tara, on the Common Sense Retirement Planning text line. It's incredibly hypocritical for Biden and the media to scream about the Israeli airstrike. Yeah, on the aid convoy, which was very unfortunate. Um, did they conveniently forget that Biden killed an innocent family of 10 with a drone strike on August 29th? Yes, that was so that he could get a good news cycle. Remember, the 13 had been killed at Abbey Gate. And he and the Pentagon wanted to pretend that they had found the ISIS-K terrorist and they were taking them out. What it actually was was seven kids and three adults. Aid workers. Guy made the mistake of bringing water home, but then they knew that. They'd watched him for a long time, as the New York Times reported. I think they just needed somebody to kill to call him terrorist so that Joe could get some cover. Because, look, his, um, his approval ratings have never recovered since Afghanistan. They went down, they never came back up. The difference between Israel and Joe in this case, after he murdered seven kids, was they were content to let the lie stay, that they hang, you know, that they, oh, we've got ISIS, don't worry, we got retaliation. They would have told that lie for years and they knew damn well it wasn't true. The New York Times, without classified security clearance, to their credit, actually broke the story and was able to prove they had murdered an innocent family and an aid worker. So then Biden apologized. Ha! <laughs> no, sorry. Israel apologized, not Biden. But then Biden like fired some people who were responsible. No, didn't. Did Israel fire those responsible or punish them? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it is incredibly hypocritical for Biden and the media to scream about the Israeli airstrike. Did they conveniently forget that Biden killed an innocent family of 10 with a drone strike? I don't think it was an accident, by the way. It was a lie. So, yeah, I'd love to see the left as upset about that as they are about what Israel uh, did. There's no reason for them to hit that aid convoy. It, it, but by all means, definitely, I think, was a mistake because it would just be stupid to do it on purpose. There's nothing to gain except inflaming the world beyond what it already is. Not defending Israel is a terrible thing to do, but at least they have been forthright about it. We didn't have to have the New York Times go out and do an investigation to prove they did it. They admitted it, unlike Joe Biden. Text rates, he tear the same things went on during the Obama administration. Remember Benghazi? Yes. Same stink. Uh, text rates, here. I didn't like John McCain, but he warned about how dangerous Antony Blinken, our Secretary of State, was when Obama tried to get him confirmed in his cabinet. Yes, he did. And he is. Text rates, why are we doing all this insane behavior in the Middle East? Because this administration has been bought and paid for by the NWO, UN, and WEF. These are steps to castrate the U.S. so that we are no longer big enough to dictate and influence world events. Um, all of this opens a door for the NWO to control all um, countries. Um, yeah, I don't know how it'll end. I just know this is not this is not good. I mean, we had we had peace in the Middle East. We had incredible achievements in the Middle East under Donald Trump. And you know why he can't raise the money Joe Biden can? Because. All of the people who want to go to war for profit know Trump's going in the opposite direction. They know he's going to quickly end the Ukraine war. They know that. And there's no profit in it for him. There's no bloodshed. Can't profit if there's no bloodshed. It's, Trump is for the people. He's for common sense, and that doesn't pay in Washington. So he's going to have to figure out how to get his message out. He does. Okay. So, um... Headed into uh, maybe World War III and definitely a pretty cool solar eclipse uh, on Monday, except you may not be able to see it depending on the level of cloud cover. Could ruin it for a lot of people, they're saying. But anyways, it'll be around 3 o'clock on Monday. Also, be on the lookout for the Devil Comet. A comet larger than Mount Everest might be visible during the eclipse. Or maybe none of it will be visible with the cloud cover. I don't know. Have a great weekend. We'll be back here on Monday, plugging away.